All right, well, welcome to a special Oh Dear interview. A Ted here with co-worker Aaron and Lund, and we have a, two of the ladies, sisters actually, from Wannabe, a Spice Girls tribute, a Barbara and Kat, or yeah. Ginger Spice and Baby Spice. Baby uh, Spice. Thanks so much for taking the time to do this. Thank oh, you yes. for having us. Thank you. Very excited. I guess uh, first off, the easiest thing is to kind of uh, tell your story a little bit about how Wannabe got started. I know you've been around for a while now. Uh, what started the whole thing? Uh, well, well, um, so 12 years ago, uh, <laughs> we, um, my sister and I and um, two of our friends had, we had all just kind of graduated or left acting school and music school and we were out of work, <laughs> frankly, and we were in that stage of like, well, good thing we did that and studied <laughs> Shakespeare and jazz <laughs> composition. And we had, uh, we had some friends actually who had started a Daft Punk tribute and they were jazz players and they were playing everything live and they had had some success with it. And mm -hmm. so I was uh, walking on the street with one of our oldest and best friends, Susie, who um, is the original Posh Spice. And we were like kind of griping about, I mean, we were <laughs> complimenting and also being like, oh man, that Daft Punk tribute thing is a good idea. Like, what could we do? And one of us said something like, well, what if we did a Spice Girls thing? And we sort of laughed at that because we were very serious actors and musicians for a second. And then we paused and we we're like, but what if we did do that? So we uh, enlisted um, Kat and a couple other friends and music, a bunch of musicians, a bunch of players. Mm -hmm. And we began- We, we rehearsed like every Saturday for like five months, I would say for yeah. a few hours. Mm -hmm. And then worked out all of like the singing, dancing, all of that. Mm -hmm. And we and booked then... the Elma Combo, which is like a yeah. kind of a legendary Toronto club where the actual Spice Girls played yeah. back when they were first coming A lot out. of very yeah. famous people have played there. Oh yeah, like the Stones have played yeah. there everywhere. And we just booked the space and we were nobody knew who we were and we hadn't done a show yet and yeah we had we were working um yeah every weekend like kat said yeah. and um we had uh, the band get like had full arrangements like musical arrangements that we yeah. were going to sing and do it all live and and we started and then, yeah and then the toronto star which is our main paper here found out about us and wrote an article and basically from there we ended up yeah, so we were the center. So, so we had crazy. no tickets sold yeah. early in the week because no one knew who we were. And we yeah. were like, whatever, we'll do this one time. And it was going to be like our friends and family. So we we're like, whatever, a one-off. It's going to be super fun. We'll whatever. sell like 60 tickets. We we're like, <laughs> we'll sell like 60 tickets and that will be awesome. This is fun. We're, we have nothing else to do. And the, the, the star ran in this in the entertainment section as the center yeah. piece oh. about us. And we hadn't played one show yet. But yeah. that article, it came out on the Saturday morning and we were playing the Saturday night. And... It was like in a movie, like the record store. There was a record store. We were selling hard copy. <laughs> yeah. We're they called us. us. We were walking down the street yeah. and I remember us just like screaming like that. Like we, we're sold we're out. We sold so out. We brought back more hard tickets. Two hours yeah. later, we're sold out. We're sold out. Yeah. So when we finally got to the stage, it was a, it was like January or something. It was freezing cold. And we're at the Elma Combo. We're hearing this like screams yeah. from out. What and we're, we're literally in the back, like green room, I would say. And it's freezing. We're in our park. Like we're in our parkas and <laughs> parkas and platforms. And we're just like kind of waiting for the show to start. And the way that we actually started the show, it was a garage that kind of lifted. Oh, yeah. No and, way. and it ended up, so it's like, we were already like, oh, it's like pretty packed, but we didn't yeah. really know what to expect. And it starts to lift. And we're kind of all in we're our like, spice poses, like frozen. And like the crowd went insane yeah. like it was like i have goosebumps to this day yeah. and to be honest i didn't hear one like i couldn't hear myself singing the entire time no. and like i actually was like i could have been lip singing because <laughs> everyone was screaming at us like yeah it was wild like, it was like sold out around yeah. the block like there's line up around the block yeah. we hadn't done one show ever we had yeah. never played we, we're all like performers but we never played to a crowd like this and it just it felt like i yeah like i don't even crazy. remember it was just like press go and go yeah it felt and then surreal that just, that's just how it started and then it just hasn't stopped and, and then it kept yeah just getting like bigger like we kept getting more and more shows then like manager agent tour manager like it just kind of yeah. kept going from there and we've been doing it for 12 years yeah so, 12 years so what was the capacity of that place for your first show 600 i don't know something like wow 600 to a yeah. thousand like it was yeah but you it was so yeah. You guys are expecting 60 people and there's 10 times, 20 exactly. times that people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was so, pretty wild. So for your yeah. first rehearsal when you guys got together, was there any like big arguments over who was going to play which Spice Girl? No. no it, was it was honestly, they <laughs> fell in like so perfectly. Yeah. It was, it was a natural kind of, and we mostly just, uh, like uh, it was a lot of, especially at the beginning, us listening. We, we'd like to tackle like two songs a week. So we would sit in um, one of our like apartments 
and like listen to like to become one and then be like okay and everyone's got a pretty good ear we'll be like okay i think the bottom harmony is sporty so annika do that and like the melodies let's keep cat on the melody yeah. and keep barb on the melody we, and we just kind of went like that and we went piece by piece but yeah. we were so we were so excited to do it and it was so egoless and yeah we, were, we had no ego attached because we expected nothing to come from it we were yeah. just like this is funny yeah. yeah. Well, nostalgia yeah. sells, right? Obviously. And there's a market for it because there's all of the, the 80s and 70s tribute bands, but not a lot of 90s, especially. And do you oh, find too, like, are you surprised even after a decade that that same demand is still there for a band with, well, especially, yeah. I guess, like two and a half albums, basically? Yeah, oh. exactly. Yeah. But the Spice Girls were like magic, though. I don't know. There's something yeah. about them. Like, they were like, the, even like their message of girl power and like they were so ahead of their time. And the five of them coming together, I feel like everyone could like resonate with something like, do you know what I mean? With one of them, it's like, oh, I'm a baby spice. I'm that like they, there was, and they were so real. They were so genuinely themselves in a way, yeah. you know? Well, you, you start to like, it's been interesting to be doing this for over a decade and even like our yeah. internal attitudes about them. Like I would say personally, I was, I like liked them, but I definitely didn't understand why they were so important <laughs> and so powerful and being in this group and yeah. watching the way that people react people respond, to us, yeah. but also, the 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 deficit of this type of uh female uh role model in the pop culture yeah. doesn't exist and it hasn't happened again mm -hmm. because yeah. it was only in this time and and the success to, of them seems to be that like they're just five regular, regular girls, girls. Yeah. who have big personalities who aren't doing it for men and who are fine with just being okay yeah and like <laughs> That is partly why it works because yeah. they're not the best singers. They're they're just having a blast, and people, especially like people, underestimate the power of groups of women. Gen I'm generalizing greatly here, but like together, like there's yeah. nothing like it. There's a reason only you know if you're yeah. a woman, you know this. Yeah, and it's always like when like film execs are like, wait, that female driven comedy sold out. <laughs> on yes, weirdly, half yeah. the population. <laughs> wants to see themselves as we all want to see ourselves anyway so that's partly what's made it um continue and yes we certainly thought it was going to stop yeah uh i thought it was gonna well we thought it was gonna stop after the first show yeah <laughs> true yeah so how many how many shows do you guys do per per year i guess now is it has that has that increased or decreased always, at all it's always it's different. increased yeah, it, it's, it's it started at the beginning it would be like six for the first year you know we would do like kind of like well when we do toronto because we're from Toronto, we would play like we kind of popped around the big venues, and then we did our first show out um, in where did we Edmonton mm -hmm. that first year, and then they then we started to play like the town surrounding Toronto, and then we kind of I think we went and out it just kept growing. Yeah, we went out like west, west. in twenty seventeen or something. I think that's when yeah. we went into the prairies and went into. And then we started doing like tours where we'd like fly in somewhere and then honestly go all like we've done like. All, we we started in Winnipeg and then went all the way to like BC, you know, like drove all throughout there and then back and through snowstorms. Like yeah. we honestly could write a book. Like, a <laughs> book. like it's actually pretty crazy. It and would be called Parkas and Platforms. <laughs> wow, there you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But well, well, we did like a in 2022, we did a North American tour and we were out for like on a tour bus. weeks on a tour bus and we played, played like 35 cities like it was we didn't have like a day off basically. we didn't have a day off it was pretty we almost died we were, several times we, we were up mountains yeah we almost it's crashed crazy. it's been pretty <laughs> wild we, we, it was it was intense so yeah so like we kind of we usually do tours we go through like stints of like january february usually the slower months for us and then once yeah. like summer comes it's like rammed and yeah spring into summer into fall even. christmas season stuff is busy and you've had some dates too i've seen down in the states as well have you found it too obviously you promote yourselves and try and book but do you ever get ones that people reach out to you and you think like oh my god i never even expected that oh yeah we we played whiskey a go-go in hollywood in 2022 wow. that was like, yeah very that was cool. really cool. and and we played palm springs pride in the same day yeah oh, in the wow. morning oh. we played palm springs pride and the night before we played santa cruz we yeah santa we cruz drove night, overnight drove okay, overnight 13 hours santa cruz said uh, palm springs yeah, yeah, yeah. Into Palm Springs. Yeah. So we literally, we barely slept. And then we did Palm Springs Pride. And then we had a three and a half hour, four hour drive because there was so much traffic into LA. Did our sound check did, and then whiskey. Yeah, whiskey, whiskey. yeah. Like that was a, like that, you know, because that's a legendary time. venue. So yeah. to be playing yeah. there was amazing. And yeah, the, the stuff in the States has been interesting. We have different like representation in the States and we have a different agents yeah. in Canada. And so we're, but it's we're been nice lucky. to. I feel like yeah. it's been nice to branch out because we've done Canada so many times, which obviously we love Canada, but it's really nice to get out into the States too mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for them to find out about us. So mm -hmm. that's been great. Mm -hmm. Would you guys ever consider going over to the, the UK 
and and playing a show wow. over there. Of course, that's like the dream. That's like the dream. Is, oh. I want to get out there so bad. Yeah, we I haven't. We, I mean, the thing is, there are obviously Spice Girls tribute acts in the UK, and so if you know if a venue is going to book yeah. an act like book someone local, however, we're really good. So they. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like this is going to be for the three of us the third time that we've gone uh, to see you here in red deer and i know i think you've played at least yeah. one show before that but uh, are you seeing too i know obviously like we are your target demographic <laughs> especially the females around this age right yeah. the late late millennials yeah. Yeah. Uh, or early millennials, I guess we would be. But uh, have you found too that it, it's getting a little bit younger? And I've noticed every time I've been there, a lot yeah. of men are starting to catch on too that, hey, mm -hmm. not only is this fun, but the, the ratio is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's actually very smart. Yeah, it's answer. smart. If you're a single- I always say that to my man. guy friends. I'm like, come to one of my spice yeah. shows. Yeah, it's like, it's better than Tinder or Bumble. Yeah. Do a wannabe <laughs> show and you'll meet your wife. Yeah, literally. Um, yeah, no, it's it's been interesting because when we started 12 years ago, everybody that saw us was in our 20s. And a lot of the, the women have had children. And so now we'll play, when we do get to play all ages shows, which yeah. are always special when we get to do that, there's a whole generation of like, kids like and they the actually six. know the words like they know the full like dance yeah. moves and songs and they're like yeah five years old six years old it's wow. crazy we get a lot of really it's really cute to get a lot of family situations too yeah. we get people who bring their moms and and we try to like we always throw in other songs into our set that are not spice girls like we throw in abba or we'll throw in you know <laughs> other things and once so, you know we'll throw dancing queen out and then the boomers are in and they're in for the rest of the show yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, i remember you guys but, did that last year and you were playing yeah. you know i don't know if it was abba or what band. and gimme, i'm like gimme gimme yeah, yeah and I, was like, Man, right. I, I didn't know the spice girls sang this song you, you completely had me fooled so yeah. well done yeah, so, yeah they, the wannabe wannabe does slightly different things than spice girls sometimes. yeah because we have to there's only so much material that mm. we can play yeah. from the actual spice girls but yeah the demographic is it's kind of everything and like we have a huge LGBTQ community uh, like following, of yeah. course, and it's, yeah. it's we really want to create an atmosphere where truly everybody is welcome and everybody yeah. feels that they can be free to be who they want to be. <laughs> That's one of our slogans. It is funny because the first show that we went to, I don't even know how we got tickets. And we were like, oh. Well, uh, we bought them. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> we saw it was coming and like, oh, let's go. That was it. Yeah. And I really didn't know what to expect. And we uh, got there and it was like, I think what you guys have really captured, at least for me, is like, I'm old. I don't go to clubs anymore. I don't know any songs. I have a baby at home. Yeah. Like going out and like, seeing you guys perform and the energy and the magic of that and then just like the songs that we used to go to the bar to like yeah. it was electric and then when you guys were coming back and i was like i don't know it's probably just like a post covid like fever dream i don't know if it'll be that good again but we rounded up this time all of our friends friends from calgary I had a house full of girls people in hotels and i was like you know it was great last time i don't know i was kind of like trying not to oversell it and it was the second time around was even better. The light up Aww, scrunchies. Yeah. I still have it in my car. <laughs> that was one of our best purchases. Yes. Those sold like incredibly. We couldn't believe it. It was kind of just like, maybe we'll get this. And then it was like selling yeah, out every single pockets. time. We're like, whoa. Are yeah. they coming back this year? Oh, I don't, are we bringing? Our I don't scrunchies? know what we have. Yeah, we'll probably bring scrunchies. Hopefully, we'll, we'll bring scrunchies. You'll sell at least <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, yeah sell at least one. definitely one for her. <laughs> I think we all bought them. Oh yeah, yeah. everybody had. I them had on longer the hair <laughs> then, yeah, so I wore one yeah. for a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> but do you guys like? I have to imagine that it's not just a red deer special that the crowd is so in love with what you're doing. I have to imagine that's yeah. everywhere you go. Well, yeah, it, it is. definitely. It, and it's like you, what you said, like with, with your group of girlfriends mm -hmm. and like everyone coming together it's it's it says a lot about our culture that you need like you have to give yourself permission to be able to go dance in a space with people yeah. and you know like i have thoughts about that but i'm <laughs> i am happy to be part of a group that can encourage that because yeah. I, why should there be an age restriction on such a thing like totally that's so that still doesn't make any sense to me and it's not like that in other countries it's not no. like that in europe it's not like that in literally any culture other no. than you know canada it has a lot of wonderful qualities and in some ways it can be quite conservative in terms of like what we allow ourselves to do the age restrictions and yeah and women yeah. especially have you know like what you're saying like i'm old like obviously you're not old but like <laughs> yeah you're supposed to say that and yeah, yeah, yeah yeah we just don't we just don't buy that because yeah. it's like why like you should dance dancing is an outlet coming together in community to, to music 
nostalgia so important. is important and, yeah. we, and we aim to try to like we're bringing our full selves to it we always do we're having the yeah. best time and yeah. we just it's want you to have the, the best, best time like it's well and, and i one time actually this has happened a few times with um there was one time um a gay guy had come up to me and he was like you know i could never enjoy the spice girls properly when i was younger mm-hmm. he didn't couldn't go to the show like you know wasn't really going to be accepted for him and he's like i feel like i finally got to like the little boy in the room dancing to Spice Girls. He's like, I got to do that in public. And like that for me was like one of the most, and that's happened a few times, yeah, yeah. like where people have said that. And that's like really moving to me that you can be comfortable with us. And it's just, it's so special. And I think especially after COVID where we were locked inside for so long, yeah. like now the shows feel even, like they've always yeah. felt amazing, but people are so great. With, like, especially coming out of COVID, yeah. like the show you're talking about, mm-hmm. all of those shows, like, were so incredible Cathartic. and special. And you could tell people were just so excited to be with one another, to be like, you know, embracing each other and singing together and like not being scared of each other. Mm-hmm. And that for me has been really, you know, profound. Yeah. Well, and obviously I would guess the crowd is a big part of it and always helps. I'll never forget last time with Lund, uh, what were it's, uh, two become one. And somehow <laughs> all, I think it was all five of you pointed at oh. him. <laughs> And oh, it was, I bet you it was the coolest thing that. that ever happened yeah, was, to him. Yeah, I think that was me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I know what you're talking. Put it on. Put it on. Put it on. Put it on. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. guy who knows zero lyrics to zero songs. I I kind of just I I more so uh, feel the music rather than than get the words right or, or know the titles. I just let it speak to me in my my own way. <laughs> Um, I but, like yeah. So for your guys' shows, like, how do you guys choose which which songs you're going to mm. perform? Do you do you always do the same ones? Do you switch it up pretty pretty regularly? <laughs> We have to do some of the same. Like we always yeah, have the, to want to be the involved. iconic Spice songs. You obviously always have to stick mm-hmm. with for sure. But mm-hmm. and like we, we started putting "Gimme Gimme" into the set when it went viral on TikTok because Kat, who's the most social media savvy of us all, was like, <laughs> "I was like, we have, we have to do Gimme Gimme." And we we're like, so good. But we that doesn't make any sense. But this is, I think, a bit of the secret sauce to why wannabes worked is because yes, it's nostalgia, but we're not you know, we're not blind to the trends. Like, and we've done songs over the years that have been relevant that are maybe contemporary. We did, we did like a whole thing when the Women's March happened and we did like a weird thing with like, oh yeah, Thine Thine. Thine show. Like we kind of, without, you know, we never want to like, it's not our prerogative to go too far in any direction in that way, but we want to make it seem like we're not just putting, we're not party clowns. Like we're not yeah. just putting, and doing an impression. Like, and we always say this, like when we have, um, when we have shows and we we have an expanded cast now because yeah. we have members of our group who have had kids and we need to bring people in and different yeah. people come in. So whenever um, whenever I like talk to a new girl and we're talking about this, we really want to emphasize that what we're doing in Wannabe is not trying to do impersonations. And it's more like the Spice Girls are superheroes. Yeah. And what is your version of Jan Ginger Spice? Or what is your version of Scary mm-hmm. or Posh? And it's not about like, what's your best Melanie C, like, or what's your best Emma Bunton? It's like, what is the essence of of the Spice superhero with the essence of you yeah. that you can bring together? And that actually is what we're doing more than exact impersonations. Like, yeah, we really our personalize our chemistry, and it it seems like an impression, but what's actually going on is I think that genuine connection. Well, yeah, and the reality is, is like we like it's like obviously she's my sister our posh spice we grew up with since we were four like yeah. some of them are good friends so like it is like we're actually friends and yeah. we're actually sisters mm-hmm. so it's like the chemistry on stage is in us acting it's like real it's like mm-hmm. we're all and yeah. and the people we've brought in have become really close because you it just mm-hmm. when you're touring when you're doing all these things spending so much time you get so close so yeah. it's actually all genuine friendships but to answer your question, because we definitely went on a, off on a tangent, <laughs> uh, we, we do always check in on what's how to like make the show special. Like we're, we always make yeah. sure, and we've tried things like with the uh, U.S. Uh, question oh, about yeah. the show. So do you, you know uh, if you could read my mind, which it's that song. It was like mm. if you could read my mind mm. with the Gordon Lightfoot song. That was a big kind of one hit wonder disco song in the late nineties. Mm-hmm. It was uh-huh. a huge hit in Canada. Yeah because of CanCon. Oh, and, I got to hear it every uh, every morning at work. Yes. <laughs> Stars on 54. Oh. That's right. Oh, yeah. Well, when we did it in we the States stay. the first time, it was cricket. They did not, they didn't yeah, know. they did it. It was just like... Hmm. Oh. So we never like, play that song in the States and we often play it here. Yeah. So like we... Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we, we always... Switch it up. Yeah, totally. Totally. So I noticed too, one thing in the last, or the two times you were here, uh, that I'm a big song. I love the slow sing-along songs and you didn't do Goodbye. 
Like, is that because no. it's too sad or because, Barbara, you don't want to go with, like stand in the corner while they sing it because yeah. you can't be a part <laughs> of it? Know, they, they, might, they might bring it back. Like, I, I've been actually thinking about it. I know. It's done, I haven't done it, it could in just a while. Bring it back this one. Yeah, maybe we'll bring it back for, this, bring show. It back for the show. If we oh. sell out, <laughs> we'll All bring that. Right. All right, there's a challenge. There All right, and I will sing along we'll to every word, I promise. Yeah. Yeah, well, we that, love that. Song. Yeah, beautiful. It is really beautiful. Yeah, maybe we'll do it. Thanks for <laughs> there you go. Thanks for yeah. that in a while. Yeah. Well, yeah. so when the mood the mood comes down because it's a sad song, I guess everyone can blame me. Yeah, just yeah. gotta make sure you follow it with an upbeat one. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Uh, Randy Men. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, they're my other favorite song. Oh, Perfect. Yeah. Helping us with the set list. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys yeah, mentioned yeah. bringing in like like other other members now. Have you have you ever thought about like now like in today's times what what would be the name of a of a six spice girl? So obviously baby spice, scary spice, oh, okay. uh, ginger spice, sporty spice, posh spice. Um, what would be the twenty twenty four version of a new a new spice oh my girl? God, stressed spice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anxiety spice. Yeah. Oh my anxiety god, spice. anxiety. Yeah, no, really. uh, confused spice. Um, <laughs> My goodness, that's a very good question. And we haven't, I have not yet thought about that, but I'm- mm -mm. Well, I'm glad I'm the first one to ask you that yeah. question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, there might be a reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there might be a reason. I, I don't know, I guess it would depend if it, I guess the only actual spice in the Spice Girls is ginger spice, which is more of a root. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or a right? like two ginger specific. root. I know it's too specific. I know. I'm just We're really to exposing their nicknames here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they are. You can just take anything and just, add spice. Just trying to, to dig yeah. deeper. I'm just trying to figure <laughs> yeah. out who you guys are. So. Like maybe slay spice. Like that could it would have oh, to be yeah. sort of yeah, like maybe drag Gen related or Gen Z something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. We're millennial. We're millennial. No cap spice. I was just gonna. Yeah. I, okay. I was gonna say that, and I didn't want to because I thought it would sound dumb, and I'm glad I didn't say it. Yeah. I guess in the spirit of honesty, too, we've been doing this for 12 years. The Spice Girls do have a, a limited repertoire. Have you found that it, like, sometimes too, does get a little stale, or like you said, you just have those little ways to to mix it up every time? Um, I don't know because I feel like people love the song so much. I mean, I think if you're talking about us, there's for sure ones I'm like. Uh, God, this one again. Like I'm, I got annoyed, but mostly like it. They're so fu it is so fun that I, I never really am not bored. Like mm -hmm. it's more I think for some songs that we've done so many times that I can, I could be like doing my taxes at the same time as I sing yeah. the third mm. chorus of Stop, <laughs> and those are the times when I've made stupid mistakes because I'm like yeah yeah yeah, and then I'll, okay, like, I don't oh, I don't know how it goes. Like how does it go? So it's more like going being aware of not going too much into autopilot because some of it's like it's so second nature now it's just like in yeah. our bodies and in our voices and it um but we sure. try with the set list that's why we try to pepper in newer material so that we don't get stale mm -hmm. uh yeah but yes there are definitely songs that like and even like it's individual for each girl right like some some parts that i sing i enjoy more than others some parts are more challenging for different singers so you're like ah that high part in this yeah or, like, that harmony in this so it's like little very specific things i think but generally i mean honestly because because the crowds are so into it it makes our job extremely easy like we yeah. don't you know we don't have to sing usually we've had had a couple disastrous shows where there's been nine people when it wasn't properly anyway yeah. uh, <laughs> it doesn't work the That's show doesn't not, work no, without a big not. crowd it does and it's like exhausting because yeah. if you have no energy from the crowd you're just like oh my god this is the worst but they're such good songs like the thing uh, is yeah. they're so catchy like they're really easy and like they're not easy they're easy listening like they're like they're pleasant yeah <laughs> so do you guys have your your favorite songs like 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 uh barbara yeah. for you what's your mm -hmm. favorite and then cat what's what's yours i think my favorite my favorite song is Say You'll Be oh, There. I was just going to say that. Because <laughs> it's such a good tempo. It's like a it's nice so good. tempo and it's cool and the arrangement is good. And it just, the choreo is like, usually happens after a big burst in the set. And then yeah. it's kind of when things start to level out. Yeah. So that's my favorite Spice Girl song. And then my favorite non-Spice Girl song that we often do is Lady Marmalade because that's when we get to go. Yeah. That's our like, going to be the song. I have the same answers. Wanna be trip. Okay. So I, I do have the same answers, but I would say 
So say you'll be there for me. Um, cause I do, I do honestly think it sounds the best, like, especially in all our voices. I think we sound the best, like our harmonies are amazing. And also, cause I'm actually the biggest spice fan in the, in the actual, in our group, that video for me, when they're in the desert, when that mm-hmm. came out, I was like, I used to watch it like on repeat. So I think the song in general, I just get like so excited about. Um, and then Lady Marmalade for me, non-spice because I get to rap in it. And it's like my favorite moment. <laughs> that, that's mine. Yeah. yeah. Now in the Red Deer show, if you need a guest rapper, I know Ryan Lund has never done oh. it before, but has always always no. dreamt of rapping no, the Lady Marmalade. I have no experience <laughs> rapping. I, uh, yeah, I'll need a lot, a lot of alcoholic, uh, yeah, you gotta uh, learn it. What's well, a bar? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, I, think, I think they serve That's alcohol at Bose. I'll check, but yeah, I'll, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, that would be so fun, but I just, I would, oh, I would hate yeah. to, to ruin the entire show. <laughs> I don't, well, I mean, you wouldn't ruin, it would be terrible. I don't think you'd ruin it. Yeah. I mean, it would be wonderfully you start practicing terrible. practicing now. Yeah. yeah that's true. You, know? you gotta start hey, learning anything's lyrics. Possible. Yeah. yeah anything's that's... possible. Um, and do you have two, I guess, uh, speaking about the crowd, it, there's probably so many, do you have any uh, very memorable crowd moments or anything like that? Something that sticks out of I've been to, the, I'm one of the weird guys at the show. It was like a 36 year old man who loves the Spice Girls and, and knows every word. I know last year at the Red Deer show, I think it was after when they're playing music. I know you come out sometimes too and dance yeah. and a guy <laughs> took his shirt off during Backstreet Boys. Uh, oh, I yes, remember yes. that vividly. Yeah. Did you have anything like that happen like at other shows that's very memorable? We've had like, we've well, had high and low moments. We, we, <laughs> there's like no, a few. There's like, been some scary moments. <laughs> we played like, we. it's one of the biggest crowds we played. We played World Pride in Toronto at Young and Dundas Square in 2017. That was, it was amazing. Like, it was like, it was like that, the was, biggest that, crowd we've ever played was, before. Yeah. And that was just like heaven. Like yeah. that was just amazing. There was the one at the Phoenix. Do you know what I'm going to say? Oh, oh, this is a crazy <laughs> Oh, she <So> knows. <laughs> this is, the Phoenix is like another pretty iconic venue in it's Toronto. We sold out. It was like, I think 2,500 people. It was like a really big deal. Oh. It was like, an, and it was an amazing show. Truly one amazing, one of our, one of my favorite shows, I'd say. And um, there was like a, it was either a birthday party or a bachelorette party. And there was kind of an upper part. The balcony. Like the balcony. Yeah. And they were, it was like a VIP kind of situation. Yeah. And apparently this girl like peed she over. swung her leg she around swung her leg oh, and peed no. yeah. over and she actually got arrested, got arrested and, oh. and taken out. so like that crazy like thing and you're just like it's like what this is like a spider <laughs> like, never would expect this like stuff happening you're like what so stop. that was like a really okay. crazy experience we played a couple we played one point one of we played a casino once and it, where it was like for their people oh, we play a lot of casinos but there yeah. was one time where we were kind of in a smaller space and it was definitely for a crowd of like older people who kind of come to the gamble all the time and sort of see the same type of crowd and they want a two-step. And this basically, there's no way there. No, this was- And as soon as we started wannabe, like an older- Well, we turned around. We turned around, okay, we turned around for Yo, I'll tell you what I want. want. Right away, this like older gentleman and his wife get up and start to like two, two steps, steps and just like one couple circling. And I just, we started all laughing. Like, <laughs> and it was so funny. It was really like, sweet. It was like, but we, it all, it caught us like all of us. And then we like couldn't get through. Like, and then we just couldn't stop because it was so funny. Like two stepping to one. And they weren't like, really watching. They had no, they, no. we could have literally been, it could have been a Black Sabbath. It could have been anybody. Yeah. Like they just wanted to two step it together. It was so cute. They weren't on the beat, but they were having a great time. And I thought, life is grand because this is such a strange experience. Yeah. It was and uh, yeah, yeah. And then people something. from the slots watching us. Yeah, people from the slots just sort of <laughs> <laughs> looking over. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> we played in El Paso once where it was like still smoking and oh, people were yeah, just, like, just like chain smoking and, like, and, slots. Slots and kind of nobody close to the stage. Like, yeah, we got fights break up, but mostly not too bad. It's like a pretty like happy environment, but yeah, you never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've I've seen some, we've seen some like pushing with girls, but not so much now, like earlier on, there was yeah. that. Like, like now it's much more, people are more chilled. Yeah. Yeah. Too old for that. Yeah. A new thing that has happened to us a lot is people bringing their dolls, like their spice dolls. Yeah. Oh. Like they'll be like giving us our spice they'll dolls on the stage. Doll. <laughs> yeah. Like singing with our spice dolls. I didn't know you, you, just, do hold on, you yeah. just hold on to them at, while you're performing. They just, they just hold, hold, hold them and then like, we, I have dolls. And then we brought them on <laughs> sometimes. Like they're funny. Yeah. Like, do, you, actually, do you sign the dolls at all? No. No, because that would probably diminish their value. Would diminish, no. yeah, yeah. yeah. But we've had, you know what, who's the scariest audience members? I, I say this with like love and whatever are sometimes little girls because mm-hmm. they yeah. they get these like looks in their eyes and, and <laughs> give one little girl like a high five. And then the little kids are like, you got high five. And, and then, then they come up all... and they start to 
climb and it's scary because we don't want to hurt them like we're like dancing with like, little fingers yeah and their moms and i was like we've had some moms where they'll be like kind of like well, give us their, their head. children yeah like, okay like, and i'm like holding the kid i'm like it's like oh, cute but it's so a little funny. it's a little precarious so you know oh, careful with the kid. And- yeah luckily bose is 18 plus show so we don't yeah. have to we don't have to worry about that just That's the right. ryan lunds at the front of the yeah stage, i'll be right? i'll be yeah. up there a- i know exactly how i'm gonna <laughs> dance during wannabe now they'll see if i can make you <laughs> break character i'll just be two-stepping away i'll find yeah, someone to two-step that. with yeah so you have to learn how to two-step yeah and rather the list is growing for this show. you have two yeah. tasks you have to yeah. learn to rap and two-step in yeah in the next I month get, yeah, yeah I, got, I guess it's a month away so that's yeah 30 <laughs> days so are you guys do you guys play multiple shows that weekend or, or is red deer the only one we're, yeah we're on a yeah. little like mini tour through like um yeah alberta to bc yeah so like yeah six i think six so. like yeah, 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 yeah so i'm picturing you guys touring around in that spice girl bus from the movie is that <laughs> please tell me that's what's we happening actually had we have actually had a uh yeah, we, tour bus before we had one in 2022 it was an rv it was like a giant, giant rv that we yeah but it was and we actually watched spice world on it yeah oh um, nice which felt really surreal and it, it's crazy because it was kind of replic- like replicating our life, like all the challenges and hard times that they go through in the movie were kind of help- happening to us. So it was yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah, but, 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 on a small but now we'll have a minivan. Yeah, we'll just try, like we'll fly in and then we'll drive through. Yeah, mm-hmm. through. Fly in, which is actually a lot easier than the bus. A big bus is not, uh, no. So, so and it's big. actually also my birthday on the Red oh, Deer. Oh, yes. wow. It might so be Lung's to- birthday too, you never know. <laughs> 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 no, he has okay. a lot of birthdays. Every yeah. time, every time Ted hosts an MC or MCs an event, he he pretends it's my birthday. He gets the entire uh, crowd is saying happy birthday to me, and then he makes me funny. finish my beer. <laughs> so last year, I think I had like seventeen birthdays, and oh bu- and by the end, other people were like getting wise to it and getting mad at me for pretending it was my birthday, even though I had nothing to do with it. My fault. Yeah. So That's so it's so not my birthday on on your birthday. I just oh, want to clear that up now. All right. All right. But I hope well, you have a very happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so I was going to ask too, though, like, do you, how many times have you watched the Spice World movie? Obviously, they're not a ton, like, because that's kind of research, right? I know we at least tried to watch it before the last show, and it it is a trip. Oh, My goodness. It is such a crazy movie. It's yeah. like, it's so fun. It's so good. It's <laughs> so fun. Yeah. I watched it when I was younger. Like I used to watch it a lot yeah. when I was when we were growing up. And then we definitely watched it probably when, when we, we were starting because we would watch a lot of footage of their old shows for research and stuff like that. And then on the bus we would have been it. the yeah. last time that I watched it. Yeah, when we were all together, and it was kind of epic to yeah, watch. It was I think we were driving through the desert and watching it, yeah. and it was like yeah. pretty surreal. It was great. Yeah, a million times we've seen him. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> has this become your guys' full time job by this point, or are there other at creative points, endeavors? Yeah. I would say at some points, yeah, because there's no time. Like when we were gone for almost like two months, like mm-hmm. I think we came back, we were gone for six and a half weeks, whatever, had like a few days off, we were out again. So it's it just depends. Sometimes mm-hmm. there's a lot and you don't have time for anything else. But then obviously everyone has like other jobs and stuff as well but most of us are working but everyone's as in the performing art so it's kind of like yeah it's one of the gigs like yeah. mm-hmm. you know like some of us are you know, uh actors or dancers and we all Creative. are creatives or like writers and so it's one of the but like you know we the thing about wannabe that's interesting is that it's very grassroots like like i'm a co-owner of the band and i run it uh with um another another one of the members of the band and then all of the internal work, all the social media cat does like, so we have agents, but we're doing everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, like, we're like doing, costumes. And we didn't have representation doing, for yeah. the first seven years. We did it completely by ourselves. We were wow. self. So, and we're, we're, we're all kind of showbiz kids. Like we kind of grew up in the business. So like we're yeah. kind of used to just doing everything. Like mm-hmm. we're, we kind of just make it work. So, so it is, you know, we definitely all put more time into it than what we get paid yeah. to do for it. Certainly. Right. The labor of love as well and because that's why it's so it's yeah it's like it's like a dream job so dream job. Yeah. sometimes it's like oh my gosh there's so much it never stops and then there's so much work but it's so worth it yeah 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 so do you guys still get nervous right before a show or is it is that kind of gone away with the more you've done um, it um no i'm more just some like if there's not a, like there's and this has not really happened a lot recently but back i'd say in the day when there wasn't a lot of people mm-hmm. I just more I'm like I just know what kind of show it's gonna be. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. If if I only get nervous if if there's an issue with like sound, like oh yeah, the sound, sound isn't good, or mm-hmm. if, like yeah, the true. venue. Where, where this rarely happens. We've been so fortunate to play amazing places with mostly really great, you know, bar owners and staff and sound people. But you know, sometimes 
you know, we, we played a show like years ago where they didn't even have monitors for us. And oh. we, we went on and it fed, like the, it was just feedback. And I had to like <laughs> leave this. I was like, I can't do this. Like there's no, and we weren't set up well. So oh, I think my, the worst thing as any performer or musician is if you're not, the thing is with sound and sound is tricky and it's hard when you're coming in. And, but if you're, if you sound like crap, the audience isn't going to know that it's, it's not the your system, fault. Yeah. That it's right. a, a monitor. It's just you suck. Mm-hmm. And and this isn't to put down sound people because it's like there's I've no more I have more respect for nobody more than a sound person. Like it's yeah, such a hard, hard job. job. And, to being and they're coming in and we're like we have you know an hour with them. Yeah, it like it's it's not hard. ideal. But this is to say that like it's I only feel nervous when I know like we're gonna not show yeah. our best mm-hmm. and there's nothing we can do about it. And that that's that's like dread. Yeah. Like that's yeah. a different. And then you're like, Shh, like yeah, but not thing. nerves. Like, but not saying. nerves. No, not nerves. Yeah. Well, at least you don't have to be nervous at Bo. We'll pump their tires because you know at Bo well, is they have uh, incredible sound people. Yeah, yeah. Bo's is one of oh. the best places ever. That the first show we played there, I remember I just being like, oh my god, oh, yeah, and the, well, the staff is amazing. Like the audience, everyone is incredible. So and the sound and the lighting, like the sound, separate sound yeah. and lighting, like support. Yeah. They've really done a good job with the sound. Like, sure. One thing that I could say from all these years of playing bars and venues is like, and it, I guess this is obvious, but you you can tell what type of show you will be as soon as you walk in yeah. to the space like you know mm-hmm. because you know how the, the space is run and if it's well managed and yeah. if the staff, how the staff treat you which means that's how they're being treated by their bosses exactly. and and bows immediately felt like it felt very like us it like it just home, it just yeah. we just jived and we felt completely taken care of and there was nothing we couldn't ask for and there was so much respect yeah for the performer and the artist and like well that, even yeah the sound system alone you yeah. can tell that they care about yeah so that's so really make their job just so, so much easy. better, so easy. So, so besides besides Bose, do you guys have a, a favorite venue that you've played at over the last last decade or so? Um, we played uh, we played this place called the Waiting Room in Omaha. Oh yeah, that was Omaha. so amazing, and it was like oh Omaha, God, was but so... it was this place called the Waiting Room. We loved that. We loved playing the Phoenix in Toronto. We loved playing the Opera House in Toronto. The Mod Club we used to Mod do a Club. lot in Toronto, and and it's a close. It closed in COVID, I think, and it was right before COVID. Right before COVID but it was like it, it was like a very special venue, and and the guy who was running it was pretty. Like we had a really nice relationship oh. with. Um, we played at that hotel in Nelson, BC. Yeah, what's that place called? We played there oh, times. oh my god! We stay in the hotel and we stay. Oh, I can't remember. It's in Nelson though, and it's a really, it's a really cool. Like it's like in the hotel. basement. Yeah, that place is amazing, and the staff's amazing. Looms Hotel or something. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, yeah, mm. we there are certain, but Bo's actually like is one of our favorites. Is actually sure. one of our favorites that we talk about a lot. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Well, good job, Brennan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Um, really quick, just because I see Lund wrote down some Spice Girls songs, I think just in case he uh, wanted to show off. I think, uh, and not to put you on the spot, but he, obviously you have the songs there, Lund. But if you want to throw out a couple of, of lyrics from even their most popular songs, I want to see if Lundy can guess them or not. Oh. Okay. If okay. Even, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, how about this? Um. um don't you know it's going too fast? Racing so hard, you know it won't last. Uh, stop. Good. <laughs> yeah. Say, should we take his notebook yeah. away though, so he doesn't know the title? Yeah. yeah. No, I wrote down like the five, the five <laughs> the most five big songs. popular ones that I know. <laughs> so. Do you um, want? Last time that we had this conversation, I decided we should be friends. <laughs> Ooh. Um. Let's be friends. I don't know. <laughs> Say you'll be there. Yeah. Oh, you'll be there. I didn't yeah. have that one. Yeah. Oh, I did yeah, have that right there. Yeah, you yeah. just didn't feel like it fit. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. How about um, um, flamenco, lombada, but hip hop is hunter. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I don't see it on your list. Yeah, actually. no, this must think... be a, this must be a deep cut. Oh, it's it's spice up your oh, life. Really? Is it not? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll okay. I'll learn that one too by the time the show comes. <laughs> I've got three things to to work on then. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, I did have a few other questions uh, written down. Um, oh, this is the end. Is this when he does the? Yeah, yeah this is when he does all the extra questions? questions at the end. Do you yeah. guys think that a, a boy band called the Spice Boys would ever work? Mm, I mean, who's to say? Maybe like. 
Uh, like, are they do what kind of material are they doing? Uh, well, they're doing like they're just doing like boy band material. Like, like, the, like obviously right now, I don't think we really have any any big boy bands, or I don't know, maybe I don't know, but uh, I yeah. feel like the the girl bands and boy bands are kind of maybe a thing yeah. of the past. Um, and do you think that? I mean, forget the Spice Boys. Do you think that there will ever be another girl band? Maybe yeah. not. Maybe, maybe not as good as the Spice Girls, but somebody that that attempts to do what the Spice Girls did. Because I think we're well, ready for I, it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I the thing is, like, if you go back all the way to like the '50s with like the girl groups, then and then into like the ten, uh, the, so the Supremes, and then into yeah. like it goes through phases, right? Mm -hmm. Like it goes through groups. It depends on like the culture. It depends on the style of music yeah. at the time. So it goes group and then solo and then group and then solo so like i'm sure there'll be another it can't be the same as wannabe because we don't live at a time where the media is that way you know we don't live at a time where everyone's going to buy cds like yeah it's, it, we live in the the age we live in where there's so many stream you know so i, I mean other than taylor swift but mm. that's you know she's kind of i guess the closest to the swift yeah world, yeah i say taylor swift except world. she's a soloist so yeah artist. that's not to say that it yeah i think it, it thinks it, it's the it's, yeah everything goes in a circle there'll be something else and it will be representative of the culture uh yeah that's relevant now probably that's a good answer um <laughs> okay okay how's this how's this for a question what oh, about yes. well, are you guys worried about like uh ai kind of taking over and and just anyone coming up with with new songs and and obviously they can they can create nowadays they they can create videos and songs they can create the lyrics and the melodies so that yeah. like isn't it like harmful for artists that ai could could create something that that a lot of people do like yeah, yeah it's harmful for all artists it's really harmful for writers it's really like all like i have a, you know i'm a writer and i have a lot of friends who are writers and composers yeah. and it's in my in the immediate uh you know the future of all this it's the most dire for them and us because you, if you don't have writers to pay or you don't have like you know friends to score films and you can just rematch well you know it's yeah the mm -hmm. the one thing though that will if anything saves all this is live performance it's the yeah. only thing right. that AI are a live are a live band, band. Yeah. and so um there's a lot i mean there's always a lot to worry about and and we i, I there's only so much energy i can like what are we supposed to do like it's, yeah. it, it's gonna happen and it's not um and it's not a good thing but <laughs> but we'll just Keep we'll just keep going going live and people <laughs> i what i hope will happen is that the need for because pe human beings you know as you know as we become more reliant on devices and our technology there is like a movement i feel like or like there is a yearning for real human connection yeah, yeah. and that's why nostalgia is so popular because people don't actually want to be disconnected no. people mm -hmm. want to be together so and we saw that back to the point about like post-pandemic yeah. shows is yeah. that actually people don't just want to be you know Inside, fighting on yeah. an Instagram comment say people want to be in in with human connection yeah. and you can't get that with AI you, you can't get a live experience with AI I mean maybe you can and we will but at this point <laughs> no that's what I feel like not we have going for us and that's what I hope for uh, I don't know all of us as we navigate this weirdness yeah another great answer yeah <laughs> and my and my I, 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 my final question <laughs> Um, what what can you tell people that haven't been to a show before? Like, what can people expect that that are wanting to come to your show and ride here at Bose on uh, on April twenty fifth this year? Um, like, how would you how would you guys best describe what you guys do? And can you guys give us a little sneak peek or or um, a little tease as to to what the show is going to be like? Our shows, we always say it's like it's the party of the century. Like, it's just you're going to have the best time. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun it's it's a, an excuse to get dressed up it's an excuse yeah. to be silly it's an excuse to not take yourself seriously it's an excuse to drink if you want yeah. an excuse to let loose yeah let loose to let loose um you're gonna get and you can cry you can, you can cry dance, oh, wow. you know? yeah. well he will <laughs> cry you will dance we're gonna do songs from the spice Coast. we're also gonna do songs we're doing Where Is Ever Doing Lady Marmalade. We'll do some other yeah. songs from other 90s queens and yeah. other big acts. It's like a varied uh, set. It's two, yeah. We'll do two sets. Uh, we'll do costume changes. We have like the accents. We have little sort of scenes in between. It's kind of like a weird combination between like a concert, kind of like an improv comedy show. Yeah. It's kind of like a drag show, except we sing yeah. live. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but we're, <laughs> but it's, it's kind of like an experience that you can only get with wannabe and it's yeah. 
a guaranteed entertaining time. Even if you don't like the Spice Girls, you'll find something to like. Even if you don't even like the show, you can laugh at it. So whatever yeah. you want, we've got you covered. It's a, and it's just a positive like vibe. It's just a good vibe. It's good vibes. Like it's good vibes all, all around. You can't go and be like that was terrible or you no. Know. You can't. It's not terrible. It's so good. And we're and we're so much fun. And we want you to have fun. And we really encourage people to dress up. Yeah. And to dance and sing with us. Like go for it. Go all out. Yeah. Like you were eleven years old in your bedroom with your hairbrush. Like, <laughs> like that. That type of spirit is what we're yeah um, endeavoring to offer to the people. I've read you. Hell of an answer. Yeah, Riley, that's... Riley, go ahead and clip that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We'll set a good example. So I'll tell you what, we yes. bring it, we're up to about, I don't know, 15 guys in their late 30s that come, which is nice too, because uh, you find that too, you get like kind of the, the cool guys, right? Where they're like, oh, I'm not going that. to a Spice Girls show. We brought yeah. a couple last time and they can't wait to go back. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing is, honestly, a lot of guys who come to our the show, dudes are they, my are, favorite. they get so excited oh. after and they're like, I'm coming again. Mm -hmm. Like, I love that. I'm like, yeah. And Aaron's flying back from Vancouver early just to go to the show too. Not <laughs> not true. to add any pressure. Hey. But, uh, oh, yay. Yes. Yeah. Worst you. case, you can catch the Spice Boys show like, next week at a school <laughs> yeah. gymnasium yes. here. Just be Lund <laughs> rapping <laughs> Lady Marmalade. But, yeah, I'm looking yeah, to start a new career too. So that's why I asked the Spice Boys yeah. question. But uh, Or you can uh, open a food truck. Yeah, yeah either or. Would work too. <laughs> A singing food truck. A singing oh, food truck. Oh, wow. Okay, I just have to learn how to sing and learn how to cook, and then I'm there. Yeah. Perfect. There All right, well, we'll uh, we'll let you two go again. Like I did warn you, though, there'd be a lot of Lund questions at the end, but uh, this <laughs> yeah. was really cool for us to, to get to do it. Like I said, these shows do hold a special place in our hearts. Uh, a lot of fun memories, all of us together, so we can't wait uh, to not only be there, but to be the presenters of it, which is, uh, I guess, last oh, question. Have you ever had a local podcast be the promoter of <laughs> your Show. Our first. Yeah. This is our first. Right. We're really excited. Yeah, we'll see how it could be. Could be uh, the last two, but hopefully not. I think. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. I'm not. hoping. I think if yeah, if it's good enough for Ryan Lund, I think it's good enough <laughs> yeah. for, for everyone else. So oh, uh, we're gonna have a blast. Yeah, we're gonna have a great time. So again, yeah, thank you it. so much for doing this. So we can't wait oh, for the it. show and for everyone still uh, not very many tickets left. So April 25th yes. at Bose Bar and Stage, uh, doors at six. Uh, I haven't confirmed this with Brennan, but if we say it here, we're gonna have to do it. Gonna show hopefully Spice World before, then the music starts, then Wannabe starts. So it's gonna be a great night. Uh, get your tickets. And again, thank you so much for doing this. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, very nice guys. to meet you ladies. Oh dear.